Yo, yo, yo. What's good with it, y'all? It's your boy Lamborghini Prime. <clears throat> Back once again talking this boxing shit. And um, the topic of this video is the upcoming fight between my man, personally one of my favorite fighters, Kel Brook versus Sergey Rabchenko. It's um, supposed to be going down in March, I do believe. And, um... Shit, this is my breakdown and prediction. Shit, it's not really... <laughs> it's not really much to break down in this fight, personally. Your boy Rapchenko is a great fighter. Well, a decent fighter. He's a very decent fighter. He's, um... Uh, I don't want to say limited, though. I don't want to say limited. The only place I saw from the um footage I saw of a lot of his fights was... His, um... His foot speed... His foot speed is very, very slow. You know what I'm saying? Outside of that, though, he has a good, um, he has a good high guard defense, but still susceptible to jabs and right hands, like quick one two. People with speed can give him a little bit of trouble and split that guard pretty easily. And his X factor, which is his power, that boy can crack. That's the one thing I noticed off top watching all of his, um, different like i watched like three or four of his most recent fights and shit and from what i was seeing man the boy can crack the boy can crack man he, he basically he everybody who fought him <clears throat> all of the names who were fighting him in each of those videos man they all seem to have a very healthy respect for his power you know what i'm saying they were able to land on him but well um sometimes easier than others depending on the level of competition but his power, man, I gotta give it to him, man. I was I was pleasantly surprised by that. It was cracking, man. Those were some thudding punches he was landing. <laughs> but um in this fight in particular, man, I don't think he has a shot in hell, man. If Kell Brook is even eighty percent of who we know to be Kell Brook as a fighter, then he should dominate Rapchenko. You know what I'm saying? The only thing Brook should really, really be weary of is the power. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to get caught with nothing big, nothing heavy, you know what I'm saying? Because Rapchenko could fucking potentially really, really hurt you or stretch you out, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to get, you don't want to be in there with a guy like Rapchenko and get hurt and, you know, hurt real bad and be, you know, have to go in the defensive mode for a couple of rounds so you get your shit back together and then pop back up in a fight. Because a guy like that could, you know, surprise you and beat you, you know? Um that's not something anybody wants to see. Or at least me personally as a Kell Brook friend, fan, I don't want to see that shit. You know what I'm saying? But this fight in particular, I believe it's a good fight for him to bounce back. It'll, it'll be good to test that eye. Either one. I believe the um the G, the triple G eye is fine at this point. But the Errol Spence eye, we don't know how. We don't know how bad that one was. And we don't know you know, how it's going to respond from getting getting a good shot on it. Will he swell easier? Will it cut easy? We don't know. <clears throat> so, I'm actually anxious to see this fight. I'm anxious to see how it goes. Because Rabchenko is a stiff enough test to see if the Kelbrook we all know and love is still there or not. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not. Maybe he gets beat by Rapchenko. But me personally, and my little put, looking at my crystal ball, I don't see that shit going down at all. Personally, I see um Kel's footwork, Kel's jab, Kel's that right hand. That Kel one two is almost it's almost flawless, man. It's textbook. You gotta love it, man. It's one of those things like watch that Sean Porter fight, man. It's really a thing of beauty. Same thing in the Triple G fight. Also, his use of uppercuts is underrated, and that seems to be something Rapchenko is really, really susceptible to. So, if I'm breaking down this fight, which I am, obviously, but <laughs> if it's um my opinion on this fight, it's going to be straight up. It may go the distance, but I can't see it going the distance. I believe Kel stops this guy by the eighth, ninth round, if it even go that far, because Rapchenko, he has a pretty decent chin, but he, he gets hurt. He gets hurt in fights, and I believe Kell Brook is just too strong. He's too fast, too strong, and too technically sound for Rapchenko. This should be a relatively easy fight for Kell. It should show the world that he's still on a still high level, a top level fighter, and it should put the 154 division on notice. 
or at least I would love I would love to see him put it on put the 154 division on notice with this fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm rooting for my man. I'm behind him. The whole UK is behind him. And I just want to see him get through this so that we can see some more meaningful fights about 154. Get Kel the title. And then let him, you know, finally cash out against Amir Khan. Because uh, from what I heard from my man, Main Man Made Man, shout out to him. Make sure you go check out his channel. You know, search Main Man Made Man. He, uh, he was saying how Kel Brook has spoke recently about not necessarily wanting to fight in 2019. So what that lets me know is that Kel's not only making a run for maybe another world title or another historic victory of some sort, but he's also looking for these cash out fights. And with Amir Khan finally signing to Eddie Hearn, all the stars seem to be lining up for that fight to either happen, <clears throat> for that fight to happen, and for Kel Brook to maybe um make his exit. But um. I personally would love to see him continue fighting because I feel like Kel's got a lot in the tank. I feel like he can fight well into 2019, but maybe that should be his last year. You know, I feel like Kel's got five or six good fights in him. Three this year, three next year, you know. That's just my opinion, you know what I mean? If he can do it, I would love it. Because like I said before, my first ideal fight would be a fight something like this one. If I was in charge of his career, this is how I would, you know, pan it out or plan out <clears throat> his uh, future endeavors. I would say the first fight would be this Rabchenko fight just, you know, as a confidence builder and, you know, get your mind right, let you know you still are who you are. Then the second fight, possibly against a champion, maybe uh, uh, who just be Kodo. Oh, man, Saddam Ali, maybe a Saddam Ali, maybe a Jared Hur, should he be successful against Lara, maybe even a Lara if Lara beats Jared Hur, because I know Lara has a really horrible style for a guy like Kell Brook as far as the way that he moves, but I, I believe that Lara at this point in his career is getting close to the end, and I also believe that all of that movement that he usually does, I don't think that he would be able to maintain that for an entire fight and beat a guy like Kell Brook on points. I just don't see it. I personally think that it's a damn good fight, and I feel like Kell Brook's power would be the X factor and that he would quite possibly knock out Lara. I know that's an unpopular opinion, but fuck it. That's how I think, you know. I say Kell Brook beats Lara. I say Kell Brook beats Hurd. The only, the only champion at 154 I feel like Kell Brook even has any trouble with at all is Jermail Charlo. And we just don't know how that fight goes. That's 50-50 in my opinion. I feel like either guy can get stretched. I feel like either guy can be beat on points. Although I do believe that as far as technical ability, Kell Brook's a little bit more solid than um, <clears throat> Jermell Charlo. And that could play well into a fight like that where if Jermell can't land that big money shot on Kell, you know, to put him out, to stretch him. If he can't do that, I feel like Jermell could very, you know, it's, it's not out of the realm of possibility that he can get outpointed and lose his title like that. So, you know, 154 is a very interesting division right now. Very interesting. And it's good to see my man Kell Brook back. Like I said, I expect him to soundly and handily defeat Rabchenko if he's anything like the Kell Brook we remember. And don't forget, if you fuck fuck with me, to make sure you go ahead and check out and download my all-new album, It's My Turn, The Throne Ascension LP. It's a motherfucking classic. G shit throughout. No fuckboy shit. You know what I'm saying? We ain't doing no funny style shit. Nowhere. Nowhere nowhere in my style is going to be no funny style shit. So, you know, if you, if you have a strong appreciation for G shit, you got a strong appreciation for authenticity, you will have a strong appreciation for me. So, hey. Head over to my official site, hustlegameboss.com, and just check me out. You know, all the way around. And uh, don't forget, if you end up buying something, anything at all, off my website, to make sure you post it on social media and tag me in it so I can shout you out, show you some love for that, man. I really appreciate it. You know what I mean? Real talk, real recognize, real. And I'm going to always show that. You know, so until the next one, man, I'm on to the next one. All right, y'all, I'm out. 100.